musical and she said, would you be interested in choreographing it? And she said, I'm not a dancer, but um, I've seen your work and I believe that you know about acting as well. So I'd be a lot less intimidated if you would come on board and kind of help me and choreograph for me. And I did, and we had a great time and she was so wonderful. And to work with, to work with actors is always so interesting because most of them are insecure when it comes to moving. So you have to find a way to, um, to, to create a language that makes them comfortable and also that they're, they trust you. So they know that you're not gonna make them look ridiculous and, and, and if they're up con, uptight or un, um, nervous about dancing, you have to find a way to calm them down, to make them look great and to make them be able to do their best work uh, as an actress inside the movement. And I love that. And all those years that I spent as an actor really gave me the opportunity to learn about how to speak to other actors. And I think I've done really well with that, which has given me the reason I've been able to go in and do operas and work on big musicals as a director, um, because I can speak to the actors too and, and make them feel good. And, uh, and, and I you love actually it. understand their point of view. Yeah. You understand the psychology behind it, which is yeah. everything, right? Um, Cause I can imagine, like we spoke on one earlier with Madonna, the mindsets of each performer is so vastly different. You oh. have to be able to adapt. So different. Yeah, you have to be like a chameleon, you know? You have to be one way for some person, one way for somebody else, one way for somebody else. With Madonna, it's crazy. You have to be like best friend, father, priest, confessor, daddy, mommy, <laughs> everybody. With Michael, you just had to be friends, you know? <laughs> you know, and it's funny because as I was searching through your book, you know, I talked about this behind the scenes. I wanted to know what were some significant challenges in your career? Because I'm like, this guy's just winning, winning, winning. Where's the bad stuff? I need to know, like, how did he manage right you want to know this is what everyone wants to know in society even on social media when you're posting all this glitz and glamour they're like i know he or she's going through something and how is she getting through it and whatever she's going through or he's going through so um i was able to get to a chapter where you you really opened up and this is the part of your book where i was like I'm in love with this man because he's such an honest person. He's a good person. And it's so hard to find good people, in my opinion, in the entertainment industry because everybody's about themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I know you want to get paid. That's not what I mean. But I'm talking about the your essence, who you are at the core. You want to do a great job, right? That's to satisfy you. But you also want to make sure that the people that you're working for, your clients, that they feel comfortable and they're happy with the product. It, it wasn't just primarily about you. So that brings me to a conversation about Diana Ross. So I was really impressed yet again. I was like, this man has worked for everybody. I give up. Diana Ross. So you worked with her before she split up with the group, right? You want to yeah. tell me just a little bit? I know we're running out of time, but tell me just a little bit about that experience. Well, um, I got to work with her three times. Um, the, and actually, I, I, I started, I, well, I was so in love with her as a kid and when she was with the Supremes and we were really poor, as I said, but for my graduation, my mom was dating a guy and he took us to a place called the Latin Casino because the Supremes were there. And through a whole bunch of things that I talk about in my book, I got to sit up right at the edge of the stage, right, right, the table was right there. And I thought that every song she sang was for me. I was so in love with her. I did get that part. I got that part of the book. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, so then I got to do a music video with her, which was wonderful, called Pieces of Ice. And that was so much fun. And um, anyway, so uh, she had asked me if I would direct a tour for her. She had seen um, Michael's tour and Michael and her were good friends. And Michael had said, oh, yeah, hire him. He's the best. So. Um, I did, but it didn't work out because a lot of reasons, but one was that she didn't want to be there for any of the rehearsals, so, which didn't make a lot of sense. So she wanted me to put the whole show together without her there and work with her musical director, work with her singers and hire a bunch of dancers. And I did. And I was such a fan of hers. And I created a show that everybody, her agents, her musical people, everybody, her singers were saying, oh, my God, this is a great show. This is exactly what she needs because she kept doing the same thing again and again and again and again. 
But what happened was I recorded it on video to send to her for her to see it. And she wound up being very upset about it. She didn't like the show that I put together and wound up firing the dancers and then eventually firing me. And, and it was a shame because uh, I thought I had really created something very, very special for her. And I think it would have been an incredible, incredible concert for her. I wish that we could see it because I believe you. Based on all the work that I've seen, that the world has seen, I don't doubt that it was not incredible. I believe that it was. Uh, but I, then again, it, it goes back to people's personalities, right? Yeah. You know, you can't yeah. please everyone. And it was just funny, you know, that, I mean, I didn't really know her. So for her to say, just go go to LA and put it all together without me and I'll come when you're done. And, you know, I, I never worked like that with anybody, you know, I mean, right. I did a lot of tours for different people, but um, I never worked like that where you put the whole thing together completely together and then you show it to them. They're right. always right. during the process to say, yeah, I like that. No, I don't like that. No. Can we do this? Can we blah, blah, blah. But that didn't happen with her. And I was so disappointed because I really did. I mean, and I do have so much respect for her that I wish she had given herself the opportunity. I think she was afraid and she was concerned at that point in her career that um, she always did the same songs and didn't realize that people loved her so much that she could venture outside of that territory right. and, mm -hmm. and try some of the other hits because they were only hits that I included. But they weren't hits that she used all the time. So mm -hmm. I think I think there was that insecurity, as we said, you know, being a celebrity, I think, is one of the greatest forms of uh, having insecurity of anybody on the earth, you know, because you're you're constantly trying to please all your millions and millions of fans who are devotees of fans who are devoted to you and love you. And you're concerned about how you look. You're concerned about how you sound. You're concerned about all of that, you know. And yes, indeed. I can't I can't even imagine what it would be like to be under constant pressure oh, every so day. Much pressure. Yeah. Constant pressure. But you did a great job explaining that in your book. And that's when I fell in love because I said, wow, this is a person who wants you to see the good, bad and indifferent and also to show you that you can still come out. You can still blossom and achieve everything despite a few hiccups. You're yeah. still going to accomplish your goals and you've done that. And I'm sure there's more for you. What's in the works for 2024, 2024? Well, I've been, I've been working. Basically, the last things I've been doing are directing big musicals, predominantly in Europe. Um, I directed uh, Cabaret years ago. It's the, uh, the musical Cabaret. It's still running 20 years later. Uh, this is the 20th anniversary. It's the longest show that's ever run in Berlin. Um, I directed the, the musical Evita in Vienna a couple years ago. And lately I've been working on a new project that's based on a Chinese legend and it's going to involve dance and martial arts. And it's a really cool, really, I can't say the name of it yet, but I'm hoping that we begin to work on it by the end of this year. And that's going to be really exciting. And other than that, you know, I do a lot of volunteer work. Um, I'm really pushing, there's a new guild out here called the Choreographers Guild to bring in choreographers who work in film and television commercials and videos um, to give them more power. We don't have a union. It's the first union we've ever had. So I've been working with them a lot. Um, I'm one of two member to two choreographers who are members of the academy of motion picture arts and sciences out of 10,600 members i was the only choreographer for years and years i'm going to say 20 or 30 years and finally uh, i got to sponsor fatima robinson who's an excellent choreographer she just did the color purple for one thing but now she and i are the only two choreographers so we're both pushing to try to get more choreographers into the academy and we're also trying to, along with a friend of mine and my agent, Julie McDonald, we've been pushing very hard to try to get some kind of honorary Oscar for choreographers. So yes. that in a year where there are great films like this year, I mean, Fatima should have received a, an opportunity or at least a mention about Color Purple. The, the dancing in it is sensational, just sensational. And there's been a lot of those films, you know, that we've just missed and they just haven't it's a political thing and choreographers don't have that much clout, but now slowly, 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 we're starting to bond together and, and have a voice. 
And, Absolutely. Uh, and I yeah. think with interviews like this, getting out, it's going to really help people to see the other side of things. Yeah. We only see the finished product. We never get a chance to see behind the scenes, the endless hours of work and tot, tot, tot. One, two, three, go. I, I couldn't even. <laughs> I could not even. I don't even have the patience. And I'll probably <laughs> forget the steps, right? And I'll have to keep doing it over and over. So it takes so much energy dedication oh. and i'm just again i'm just so excited to have had you on our show and guys that are listening and that will tune in to this show today make sure you share this interview make sure you purchase the book it's right here mr patterson's holding it icons and instincts okay it is an excellent i'm not i'm not trying to bribe you guys i'm telling you i was i have an attention span of a gnat and I was glued the whole entire time. I was, it is such an impressive book, mainly because mm -hmm. this is a man who perseveres and he tells you about his life from the beginning all the way to where he is now. And guys, if you didn't take anything else away from this podcast, just realize something. You can do whatever your mind Absolutely. tells you to do. You know, Absolutely. and listen to the voice that Mr. Patterson told you. That's your subconscious mind. Stop calling me Mr. Patterson. <laughs> I'm a mannerable person. I can't help. And I'm from the South. I'm from the South. We always say ma'am, sir, and all that. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to be a ma'am, sir, in a couple more years. I just need to just kind of take it off. It's a habit. But guys, you can do whatever you set your mind to. And I think you guys can tell. I mean, he's in all of the videos that you grew up and listened to on television and the cassette players, if you're old enough to know what a cassette is. Um, and I, again, Vincent Patterson, you, I feel like we're friends because of that book <laughs> and because of this oh, interview. Man. So um, any final words you have for the audience uh, as we close out? Uh, well, I want to just say something about the book that you can get it on amazon.com. And even though Danny's listening to the audio version, that's not my voice. And I was very upset about that. I wanted them to use my voice because I was an actor and it's my stories and I love telling my stories. Uh, but it's still, many people have purchased the audio book and have really enjoyed it. But basically what I want to say is that, you know, we live in a difficult world and times are hard and, you know, you have to find what makes you happy, your own happiness, so that you can not only be the best you that you can be, but you can share that love with those people that are around you or those people you meet on the street and, you know, just spread the love. That's, that's the most important thing. It's, it's a tough world and we need that. Guys, I know you guys are just excited as I am about this interview that just took place. Make sure you go get the hard book paper copy of Icons and Instincts by Vincent Patterson. This guy is just full of so much talent. I just can't even say it enough. It's, the proof is in the pudding, guys. If you remember this video, <laughs> you know, here's a behind the scene clip just in case you guys came late to the show. He's worked with Madonna. Guys, look him up. You know, you can look this guy up from your cell phones. Not only is he like just supremely talented, he's actually a really, really good person, down to earth person. So make sure you go get a copy of his book. Um, if you reach out to him, let him know that Sisters Talk sent you. And guys, whatever you do, don't give up on your dreams, okay? And I just want to thank you guys again for tuning into the Sisters Talk podcast. We'll see you guys again next month.